JC Evans here. All right, so today I have a few, a series for you. And we're gonna start off with um, letting you know who I am, Patricia Evans, and I am a relationship coach for successful young Christian men, 25 to 32, and um, specifically for leadership, for empathic leadership, and for um, communication skills so that you can attract the right woman and uh, you can have a lasting, healthy, joyful marriage. And that is what we're here to do. So if you could just picture that, that right now, I know that you, you could be working really hard on whatever career that you're in right now, but if you don't have someone to share that with or someone to, now, now that sounds very cliche, to share that with, then um, it just kind of, the luster isn't as great as it should be for you, I'm sure, because I've had that and I know many of us can, can relate. But also, if you have someone who is tearing it down, and so I've experienced that, where I've had all my degrees, I have my post-master's degree, I've worked really hard with my um, secondary master's degree for my, uh, for, um, I mean, uh, Master of Science degree in secondary education. Um, and then during that time, I was with someone that was abusive. So that was really, really difficult. And then I actually suffered burnout. It was really an awful experience. But coming out of that, being the go-getter I was, I went back and I got a post-master's degree with two children, nursing, all that I went through. And I went through so, so much. And I've spoken to so many people that are empathic like myself. I happen to be a Hayoka empath who have lost so much. If I could just share the things that I've heard, it's just so sad. I'm talking thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, sometimes millions, and it's all because they built this wonderful empire, if you will, and they went with someone that was toxic and ended up having to, because either they weren't married or they were married and that the person was trying to literally sabotage the entire um, um, business that they built together or whatever they built together or whatever she had or he had before the person came. So the danger in not having someone that God has for you is that you can actually lose so much. And I don't think people talk about that enough. We always talk about how we want to share our lives with somebody, but we don't talk about what we can lose. And so many of us have actually gone through toxic relationships in the past. And what's sad is that we can go through one and then we can get over it. Like I have also, I ended up, you know, getting over that. We have, it's in my book, Resilient Joy. And I'll talk about that too, if you want me to. And um, then I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I made it. I'm with the Lord. I'm praying. I'm, I got all the things. I did all the things, you know, I did what I call re-raise myself. Is that a term, a, a term that I'm coining? Um, and then I meet someone new and I do it again in just a different way. So what happened was I had a cycle that I couldn't break of attracting the wrong men. And I didn't understand what it was. So in my studies, I've learned something. And I want to teach you this because if, if you're anything like me, you're probably scratching your head too. What is it? Why? I'm smart. I'm educated. Um, it's nice. I have all these wonderful qualities. And it's kind of like a hidden reason. And that reason is because you're probably empathic. So there's different levels of empathic abilities and you can be at a, at a lower level or a very light level of being empathetic, but you are born empathic by nature, but you think of other people's feelings and you think of them over yours at times, or as you're doing yours, you also think of theirs or sometimes in place of yours, whatever the case is. I consider there to be a lower and higher level of empathy that a person can have. And I believe in our lower levels of being empaths, I am considered a Hayoka empath, the highest level empath is what I was born to be. So you can be born to be a high level empath. That means that you, you whatever those things that empaths have, you have it at the highest level. <laughs> you know, mine adds the spiritual and the healing. But empaths are unique. There's a 2% of the population. It's very, very, very unique and rare. And that's why we, why we don't hear about it a lot because if everyone can't be it, then of course they're not gonna make a big deal out of it, right? But there are people who are born that way. And I think they're supposed to be nurses, teachers, pastors, you know, givers, right? But the problem is, is that, and what I do as a coach is that if you are an, I work with empathic people, if you're an empathic person and you don't develop your empathic abilities not and not stay at a lower level, you will attract those kinds of people is the point, is that I attracted narcissistic people because we are the best people for them. You probably see me say this in plenty of my other videos. 
Um, now that it's become very well known what in narcissism is and all of that, I'm not sure if we're linking the two. It's in a small community of people who know, and those are usually empathic people, that the people that the narcissistic people are drawn to are empaths. But also when they're at, the, and that's, these are empaths at their lower level of strength where they don't know their power. But when they start getting into a higher level, they become the, the narcissist kryptonite. We're actually also the only group that can really combat a narcissist, especially a high level one like, um, or stronger, I should say. So we talk about lower level, high level, and that is your um, growth in your gifting. But then we can talk about a lighter and stronger empath. And that would be you are born as a light empath, like, like you have some empathic gifts and then you go further and further, there's super empaths. And then there's the highest, which is Hayoka, which is like spiritual and, and um, usually speaking out of a higher level mindset rather than just serving themselves. So it's more like a, a God connecting to them and they're kind of honoring how God leads them to speak, not what they want to speak out of their own flesh. And a super impasse is way up there as a high, one of the highest impasse. However, they do conform to what others think and they do want to make people feel happy and they, don't, they want to um, be able to fit in and all that. But Hayokas don't fit in. They go backwards. I mean, you'll see me do some things that may go against what I should be going through. And that's why the book um, is the way it is. I have the Bible, but then I'm dancing, dressed in a belly dancing outfit. So that's kind of a great example of a Hayoka empath. Very, very, very rare. So if it's rare to have a, to be an empath, 2%, imagine how rare it is to be of that 2% Hayoka. So that's why I actually am here to help other empaths go to a higher level of their empathic ability, even whether if they're a strong empath or a lighter empath. So the reason you need to know about yourself if you are one and, um, you know, if you want me to put together a quiz to help you, I can do that for you. But there are videos that you can watch that you could just look it up. You know, what is an empath and just really study that. You'll know and look up Hayoka and see if you fit those. Very rare. And we usually have really tough lives. So not, not many people are. But um, the point um, is that you attract narcissists. You attract toxic people. And that is why you keep coming out of one. Even if you've learned, you're attracting them. And why do you attract a narcissist? Because they are looking for supply, for validation, to be uplifted, to be heard and all that. And we actually, it feeds us to give, to uplift, to help. And so being a coach, it's just natural for me to do that because I've been doing it my whole life. So it's just natural for me to just do that. So, you know, having my leadership degrees and teaching degrees and, po and post-master's degrees, that actually just gives me the credentials and being a certified relationship coach and matchmaker. So that just helps. But the fact that I do it, this is something that I just do. And, my, and you know, and as an artist, I'm actually uplifting and as a minister, I'm doing that. So you, some of us just do this. And when narcissists see us, they're like, oh my goodness, this is endless supply over here. I want that person. And then we are, we, uh, at a lower level, we can overlook lots of red flags. We could do a lot of just really wanting to believe in the person. So if that sounds like you, you're who I'm talking to, stay on for these series because this is for you. So if you've been ha in a toxic relationship and you've been not wanting to know how to break out of it, one of the reasons why it could be that you're an empath. And once you break out of that, once you learn your power of what it means to be an empathic person and you become a powerful empath, at a higher level, you can be the very you can be kryptonite. In other words, you they'll be scared of you because now they will be revealed. And what we do is we can reveal um, their weaknesses. And so the some of the characteristics of a narcissist is someone who is insecure and they're um, kind of like a, a child that's like a brat. <laughs> you know, have you ever heard that? Where it's just like if they don't get their way, they're gonna throw a temper tantrum. So now think of that child, and they never did grow out of that, and that's parenting some and. And it's also their temperament and how the parenting didn't match with what to do with that temperament to prepare them for adulthood. Well, let's say that they went on and a lot of men tend to be the ones that fall through that crack, I believe. While there are women that are narcissistic and I would love to talk to you about that because that's very important. Men can be the ones that do that. They can fall through the cracks and um, that leads to them being um, more stay that way, even as adults. They never develop into a fully developed man. 
So women that go through that, we do do things that are, we are hard on women. We do expect a lot of them. We sit up straight, This, especially my generation. But what's happening is we are having a modern woman that is now taking on masculine ways. Wouldn't you agree? This is another nugget for you. And these modern women with these masculine ways, even in the Christian community, even if you're a Christian man, they're still picking this up. I even had it in my generation, and I'm older uh, than a lot of you. So what happens? Well, if, you're, if the dad is raising his daughter that's going to be that strong girl, he's going to treat her like he would his son and let her get away with being too bossy, too strong, and all those kind of things. For girls, they call it bossy. For guys, they call it aggressive, right? So it's the same thing, trying to get people to do what you want them to do and supplying your needs in, at your pace and the way you want it. If you are a girl and you've been raised that way, you become more of that modern woman. I think that's how we breeded modern women. So as a man, having to find women in this, in this pool of women, you have to keep in mind that you are a magnet to these women. And that's why you've been having this cycle that you can't break. So all you would need to do is to begin to build your um, ability to be a fully developed impact at a higher level and you will have, you will be able to set boundaries, you'll be able to see red flags and know what to do with them and to enforce them. And that's how you're going to break the cycle for the next person. You'll be attracting the right person because they say water seeks its level. So if you're at the level that's lower, you're going to seek what's seek. You're going to seek things that are are at that level, and that's what you're going to attract. So if you want to hear more about how to break the cycle and to talk more about um, setting boundaries and knowing red flags, then stay on because that's what we're doing in this series. We're learning these things. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. If you want to know more about how to be a part of my course, I would love to have you there. So if you want to, you can click on my webinar and I would love for you to watch that, see it through and see if this is something for you. And then you can click or you can go straight to my Calendly link and then we can just get on a Zoom call to see if this is something for you. Okay. All right. Well, God bless you. And um, I also have other things that are ministry related. So if that fits you best, then we can talk about that too. Because I do have something going on that the Lord has me doing that's ministry related. That's just a one-off. And I would love to bless you in any way that God is leading me to do. All right. So stay tuned for the next video as we continue to talk about how to attract the right woman that God has for you. If you are a young, successful, um, single, empathic young man that is a Christian man that's between 25 and 32. I look forward to helping you. All right. See you in the next video. Bye.